This project starts off with a single length of American cherry and it's the first time I've used this timber. I've been curious about this wood for some time. I worked with English cherry briefly and that was very nice to work with. So I was curious to see how the American version would compare. This project was inspired by a pub meal one evening when my sister's burger arrived on a square plate like this. I also discovered a cookie dough pizza dessert that evening, but let's get back to the woodworking. So I cut this one board into three roughly equal lengths, and then I could straighten one edge of my planer before running into strips of my bandsaw. The idea here is that I would create a stack lamination which would be more stable than a large thick board. So by taking a board that's sawn through and through like this, I'm essentially creating a quartz sawn block. Once each board is still on edge and glued together. And not only is the bandsaw deemed being safer than a circular saw, but with a thinner curve line there's also less wastage involved. If you've not worked with cherry before, then I find it the machines very easily. You do get some boards that will have a bit of a difficult grain, you have to be careful with that. But on the board I had here it was Pretty straight grain and pretty much perfect. There was no tear out or anything during the planing process. And whenever you're machining identical components of the same thickness, you can stack them together like so, and that will make your working more, more efficient. So here I'm looking at the grain, looking out for any knots and defects I want to try and avoid. I'm also looking closely at the grain on the edges of these boards because with curves like this I can use these to match the radius on the corners of my plate. I also decided it would be best to make this glue up in three different sections so I had less to worry about. And of course the glue I'm using is rated as being safe for direct food contact. Once again I'm using my wooden sash clamps because I find them to be a lot better than the cheap aluminium ones. These clamping cords used at both ends will help to keep the ends level and the board flat. And with two sets of strips already glued up together, I could insert the middle ones and complete the assembly of this board. Cherry can be a very nice wood to work with, and it can machine quite well as I said earlier, but I do find it very difficult to hand plane without getting some tear out, which is why I'm using my belt sander here. The finished width of this ball was just within the capacities of my sliding mice saw.
I should warn the superstitious among you that I'm using 13 boards for this lamination and it measures about 12 and a half inches in width as well. Here I'm simply using a spacer to set the distance between my router bit and the fence. And I can use a second spacer to set the plunge depth with the colour plunge down flush to the surface. Using a, a core box bit about three eighths in diameter um, to make these this recess in the center. I'll start by plowing out a groove to create a kind of channel around the outside. This would be a great little project for a CNC router if you have one. I do have access to one at work actually, but I, just, I quite enjoy the challenge of working to my own limitations of my own workshop. And with that trench now defining the external edges of my recess, I could adjust my router fence to start removing material from the centre. This would have been much faster with a larger diameter bit, but again I'm working within the limitations of the tools I have available. I've never been too impressed with the last extraction on this router, which is one excuse for me not using it here. You can see how that small diameter cut left quite a very rough and textured finish. My thinking here was that I could fit the guide bush to my router and safely use that to level off the unevenness without cutting into the sides I machined earlier. But it proved to be very tedious and didn't make a lot of difference to be honest. When the time came to remove that centre section from the waste inside the plate, I fitted my router with a large sub base that would stop it from tipping over the sides.
and by rounding off these corners I can prepare myself for the next stage of routing. I cut one of these chamfers on each of the four lower edges and they're designed to act like finger lifts. I'm using a bearing graded cutter with a 60 degree cutting angle. I also wanted to put a small round over the top edges of this board but to be honest it would be easier to do this in the router table with so little support around the edges. And after all that rousing it was time for lots and lots of sanding to get rid of those lumps and bumps. But even my sander can only go so far and to get tight into those corners I have to use my card scraper. Then I chose to add some further detail to the underside of the board, which would rarely be seen to be honest. And it starts with a simple circle cutting jig made from a bit of plywood with a screw in the centre. And again with the perimeter cut I could then remove both the waist with my router. and eventually I had to reach for the sander once again. Routing those chamfers across the angry left me with some burn marks. Now I can scrape these away carefully with a chisel, but the last thing you want to do here is start sanding them because there's a wrist end you can round over the edges. I'm using my favourite food safe oil to finish this piece and I leave it for about 15 minutes to soak in before I wipe away the excess. In all I think I applied about 4 coats. Although I am using painter's pyramids here, I've grown to dislike them because the points leave small indentations on the work in my experience. In the three months since I made this piece, it's, it's quite surprising how much this cherry has darkened. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. And thank you all for watching.